Father God in heaven, I pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal all that Jesus has done for us and that we will partake of the blessing of God in a, a super abundant measure in this morning service. I pray that you will recreate our people's spine. I pray, Lord, that their backs shall be healed. I pray that migraines will disappear. I, I, I pray that every growth in anybody will be removed this morning. I pray that the signs and wonders will manifest to thy honored glory. And Lord, that you will meet their every need, both emotionally and in every way. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, guys. I want that scripture back up as quickly as you can. Genesis 12, 7. Now, I, I want uh, the person on the, uh, working at the, at the, on the overhead, work with me. I want to just establish, we're going to read a number of scriptures. And there it is on the board, uh, on the screen. We're going to go through a number of scriptures, and I'm going to establish just one thing. God gave the land of Israel to Abraham and his descendants. Amen? I was reading it, and I was thinking, you know what? Uh, people are fighting about Gaza Strip and West Bank. Uh, I'll show you that God promised from the river Euphrates right in Iraq, right through to the, to the Nile of Egypt belong to Abram and his descendants. They haven't got half their land yet. All right. Verse 7 of chapter 12 says, And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, Now let me just say something. If God says, I give you this, does he give it? Does God keep his promise? All right. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, this is in our Bible, this is an accomplished fact. I will give this land to your descendants, your seed. And Abraham built an altar and dedicated to the Lord who had appeared to him. I will give this land to your descendants. Uh, overhead camera, uh, uh, project the next verse, please. Uh, uh, I think it's 13 verse something. Or is Uh, you must be on your toes, whoever's over there. This is God saying, I am giving all this land as far as you can see to you and your descendants as a permanent possession. Anybody got a question? God's given Israel. Israel has got the land. It's their possession. They own it. Everybody says, Israel owns the land. Yeah. Next verse, please. Quickly as you can. Then God says to Abram, go and walk through the land in every direction, for I'm giving it to you. We now three verses, right? God's saying it over and over and over. You own the land. Say, Israel owns the land. Next verse, please. So the Lord made a covenant with Abram that day and said, I've given this land to your descendants all the way from the border of Egypt. Uh, uh, the, the, the older translations say from the river of Egypt, which is the Nile, to the great Euphrates River is where Baghdad is in, in Iraq. That includes Jordan. That includes most of of Saudi Arabia, possibly Lebanon, or and Iraq, okay? God made a covenant, I give this land to your descendants. Okay, let's take the next verse, please. And I will give the entire land of Canaan, where, you're now, where you now live as a foreigner, to you and your descendants, it will be their possession. What's that next word? Obviously, you don't read too well. Let me ask again. It will be your possession for how long? Forever. 
showing, and, and I will be their God. So in other words, God gave the promised land to Israel. Is that right? And how, for how long? Forever. So it belongs to them now. It belonged to them since that day. Is that right? Amen. Oh, uh, I think there's one more verse. Is there another verse? Or have we exhausted the list that I gave you? Uh, amen. Let me quickly look. No, that's the... Okay. Here's my word to you. If God told... If God told uh, 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 Israel... That's their land. Did they own it? Yes or no? May I ask you again? Because some of you fell asleep or you just are, are, are not polite enough to answer somebody when they ask you a question. If God gave Israel that land, do they own it now? Yes. Did they always own it? Yes. Wow. But here's a problem, church. From the time that Abram was told this is your land, Abram bought one piece of ground to bury his wife. He didn't own the land. Huh? God says you own the land, but you don't own the land. How does this work? And then they go off to Egypt and they stay there 400 years. They stayed there 400 years and they end up as slaves. But God had said more than 400 years before, Canaan is your land, you own it. But they weren't living in Canaan. They weren't living in the house God bought for them, the home, the, the country. They were living in a foreign land, became slaves. When they were slaves, did they own the land? They did. Somebody else say they did. They did. You need to follow me very carefully because it's very important. I'm going to bring you at where it fits you. Are you listening to this now? They own the land. They, then they go and they want to go into the land. You know the whole story, and I'm not going over it again. Been using it lately uh, about the Exodus. They get through the Red Sea, and now they've got an 11-day march to the Promised Land. Did they go in? Some of you don't know your Bible. Let me ask again if you do. Did they go in straight away? They spent 40 years in the wilderness and the whole generation died. Did they own the land? That's a screw floss, young. They own the land, but they, they're dying in the wilderness. Only two men lasted, not even Moses. Moses didn't get in. Everybody died. Aaron and Miriam died. Moses died. Everybody died. Just two got in. For 40 years, they lived in the wilderness, but they owned the land. Okay, so then they get into the land. And man, when God gives, he gives well. Now, a lot of people in our modern world have a problem about the fact that God said kill all the people living in the land. The reason God did that and the reason God in his, uh, uh, in his mercy waited 400 years and 440 years or whatever, nearly a half a millennium before he went and got them to kill all the people was because they were burning their little babies to death. They would make a pot-bellied golden uh, idol. They would put fire in the idol, and that thing would become red hot, and they'd put their little babies into the arms of this pot-bellied uh, 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 idol, 
and they would beat drums to keep and to make enough noise so the mother wouldn't hear her baby screaming as she were as he was excuse my language was fried to death. Do you wonder why God said, go wipe them out? Yeah. If I was God, I'd have wiped them out too. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? And so they go in and they kill everybody in the land. But did you know that those people lived in houses? And they had farms. And they had orchards. And they had vineyards. So when they killed all the occupants, guess what they had? They walked into a land and they had the house. Everybody had a house. Everybody had a vineyard. It was a land flowing with milk and honey, pomegranates and oranges. And, and if they, there were any Afrikaans, Jews, Nartis, And there was peaches and plums and apricots. Everything was laid on. And there was wheat. And there was, and there was uh, 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 millies, maize. It was all laid on. They walked into a land and they didn't have to pick up one finger. They had a house. They didn't have to build it. They had, a, they had vineyards and orchards. They had everything and was laden and they had it all. May I ask you a question? When they went in, they owned it. But didn't they own it when they were in the desert? Didn't they own it when they were slaves? How many of you know your history? After... Uh, uh, some years, they fall away, they fall in a sin, and they land up in Babylon, again as slaves. They were no longer in their land. Here's the question, did they own the land? They're living in Babylon, did they own the land? If they own the land, let me put it to you bluntly, why? Why do you say they own the land? The obvious answer is because God said it's yours. Has God ever told you that there's something that you own? Has God ever told you that you own divine health? Has God ever told you that you own, that you own, you, that you have a right and the ownership of healing for your body and for your family. Has God ever told you that God will meet all of your needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus? But here is the question. They owned it and then they went to Babylon. They came back. And 2,000 years ago, they crucified the Lord of glory. They rejected their Messiah, and for nearly 2,000 years, they didn't live in that land. Now they live in the land, and they've got a billion Muslims breathing fire to say, we're going to take the land away from you. Whose land is it? It's Israel's land. How do we know? Because the God that created the heavens and the earth said to Abram, this is your land and this is a, a land of your seed. Your servants, your, uh, your, your descendants will own this land. The problem is there's a difference between owning land and occupying land. And uh, you know, when I saw this, I nearly went through the roof. Amen. You know what? You can come to our church and we can 
put on a show for you and have good music, and we do have good music, but we can put on a show. But I have come here to say, God, show me how that I can go from ownership to occupation. I'm not willing, I'm not willing to die in the desert. I am going into what belongs to me. Here's another question. It really bothered me. I, I, I want to read it to you. In 2 Samuel 7, verse 16. Can we get that up as fast as you can? 2 Samuel 7, uh, Samuel 7, 16. There we are. Thank you. You're on the t your toes. God speaking to, 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 uh, uh, to David. And he says, your house and your kingdom will... Actually, it was Nathan speaking to David. Nathan was speaking to David. But it was God speaking through the prophet. And he said, your house and your kingdom will continue before you for all time and your throne will be secure forever. Now, it might have been through Nathan, but God spoke it. Are you listening to me? Careful now. Did somebody sit on the throne of David? Now, let me back up there just for a moment. Richard said this to me, and it's what I understood. That seed would be Jesus Christ. But how many hundreds and even a thousand years after David, Jesus pitched up? And there's a gap. Because when they went into captivity, there's nobody sitting on the throne. Am I some sort of dunce? Or do I believe that God is eternal, God is powerful, that his word never fails? Your house and your kingdom will continue before me for all time, and your throne will be secure forever. Now it is secure forever, for the son of David is sitting on the throne. But physically it didn't happen. God said this and it didn't happen. Oh my God, did good. does God's word fail? No, 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 no. God said your kingdom won't fail. So David's descendant owned that throne, but they didn't sit on it. They owned it, but they didn't occupy it. All right. Tighten your seat belts. Let me just read you two more scriptures. As they are going out of... Um, as they're going out of... Uh, um, As they're going out of, uh, uh, um, out, of e out of Egypt, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 8 and 21, it says, Behold, I set the land before you, go in and possess the land which the Lord swear to your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give to you, and to, to them and to their seed after them. Verse 21 says, Behold, the Lord God hath set, uh, 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 thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it as the Lord God your father said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. Now let's turn to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore rise, go over this Jordan, thou and all thy people, into the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Let me bring this down. Let me get it all across to you. Please, this is the crux. Listen to me. God gave them a land. They only possessed it when they were obedient and believed God. And when they doubted God, they didn't possess it. And uh, David's 
offspring sinned and they didn't possess the and the question is God's word didn't fail our faith fails the answer is Lord I believe help thou my unbelief because I am going to take what I own now I, I want you to know if you're sick I'm not here to I'm not here to condemn you I've been sick I want to tell you in uh, uh, about 38 40 years ago I was dying of nephritis nephritis is a very severe kidney complaint and I've testified about it my mother prayed and that day uh, my brother Jeff prayed for me him and his wife and instantly I fell asleep my fever broke I never had another, I, I was passing water in my urine, buckets full that I couldn't walk from here to call you uh, to the front row. I want you to listen to me now, very carefully. And, 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 and the next morning I woke, there was no blood in my urine, the fever was gone, I was healed. Last week or a couple of weeks ago, I went to Dr. Ski, the great doctor, and he did blood tests on me, and he, by the way, he said, i got bad news for you if you don't like me. He said, you are healthier than nearly all the 60-year-olds that have ever been to my place. You ha he said, 60-year-olds would give their eye teeth to be as healthy as you. Then I said, what about my kidneys? Because I was healed 40 years ago. And I told him this whole story about how the devil tried to kill me. And you know what? He said, Pastor, if you had nephritis like you say you had, and I did. By the way, I finally went to a doctor and they diagnosed it. Was a, 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 it was a medical diagnosis. And I'm not here to condemn you if you're sick. I'm here to pull you out of the land of Egypt right into your possession of health. Now listen to me. He said, if you had nephritis like you'd had, your body might have overcome the disease, but your kidneys would have been scarred all over. And he said, I want to tell you, you have the kidneys of a youngster. There's no sign of nephritis. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know what? I went over from ownership to occupation. Hallelujah. I occupy divine health in my kidneys because God gave it to me. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. The problem is, do we really believe that God gave us? Oh, you know, you some holy Joe. I've made so many mistakes. I wrote the book and added a whole lot of chapters. But my brother God didn't do it because I'm good. He did it because of his grace. And you have a right. I want to take you by your neck and drag you out of your bondage. What has God given you? He's given you healing. He's given you joy. He's given you peace. He's given you blessing. Hallelujah. He's given you finances. He's given you a victory over sin. He's given you power over the devil. He said, I give it to you through the blood of Jesus. And our problem is, it's given. But through our unbelief, we die in the wilderness. But I, I'm not going to die in the wilderness. I'm, I'm not going to die wandering. I'm going to go in and possess the land because it belongs to me. Has God ever given you a promise? Is anybody in this church says, yes, God has spoken to me. I have a promise. Amen. Hallelujah. My, our, our principal is sitting here. Did God ever promise you? Did God promise you that land? That it's yours. And we're going to go and possess it. Occupy it. Well, you're already occupying most of it. But we're going to occupy the whole lot. Because when God gives something, He never changes His mind. Amen. 
That's why after 2,000 years, Israel is back in their land because God never changes his mind. Everybody raise your hand and say, God has given me forgiveness of sin. Raise your other hand and say, God has given me divine healing. You say, you say, but Pastor Jimmy, I don't have divine healing. I've got this terrible sickness, pain, disease. Last night, eight people got healed over an hour of power. Two of them fell out under the power, began to shake. I never even got, I never got within about five meters of them, began to shake under the power, fell on the floor, got healed. You know why? Because you like Somebody, you own the promised land, but you are walking around in the wilderness. You need to make a bow turn and say, I'm going in to the promised land of all that has been promised to me. Hallelujah. Can we, can we this morning take hold of God? Amen. Abram. The man that we spoke about so and read so much, God promised him a child, and it took him over 10 years to get the child. But he stood in the word, I am a child. In fact, he even changed his name. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use uh, 21st uh, 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 century language. He changed his name from Baron to one that bears lots of children. Are you listening to me? For 10 years, the guy called him. You know what your problem is? We've got to believe. You st- need to start confessing. Hey, devil, that's my ground. Hey, Satan, that's my health. It belongs to me. Hey, devil, that bondage has broken. You don't have a right. I am entering in this Sunday morning at 10.30 on, what day is it, the 28th? On the 28th of April, I nearly said, I'm going back. August, right now, I'm going in it, what's mine is mine. Step away, side devil. I can a cart and transport. I got the title deed. It's written in God's word that with his stripes you're healed. Hallelujah. I have the mind of Christ. It's my territory. I have the nature of Jesus. It's my possession. I have the victory of the cross. It's my possession. Hallelujah. We've got to own it by faith. JP, you're going to have to move benches. Come here. Now, you must pull away from me. Not too hard. I must win. <laughs> He's younger than I am. Listen to me. You know what I'm doing to most of you. I'm trying to drag you into believing what is yours. And some of you are screaming, give a scream. Can you give a scream? (laughs) I'm trying to drag you into the favor and the healing and the blessing of Jesus Christ. It's yours. I said it's yours. It's ours. we got to go in and possess it. And I want to drag you to church. Oh, I don't, need to, I don't need to come to church. You know why you don't need to come to church? Because you're happy to die in the desert. But you're going to get a church. You're going to learn what's yours. You're going to get a church and you're going to learn how to possess it. Amen. We can't say it today, but oh, it's too cold to come to church. Oh, I'm too tired. Well, I don't need to go to church. You know why you need to go to church? You need to be told again 
What the devil stole is yours. He has no right. You're going to kick him in the butt, if you'll excuse my language, and you're going to take what is yours. And I, if I have to drag you kicking and screaming into the blessing of the Lord, hallelujah, I want you to be blessed. Amen. You can go. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand here this morning. It's mine, Jesus. The blessing is mine, Jesus. It's mine. 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 Health is mine. Victory is mine. Land is mine. Blessing is mine. Wholeness is mine. Hallelujah. Karaba shala rabahanda. Karabo shita barabanda. Satan, you old a liar. You're the father of lies. Somebody said, Are you praying to the devil? No, don't pray to him. I talk to him. Hallelujah. Satan, you are the father of lies. You take your lies and get out of my mind, out of my heart. What I own has been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm not willing to own it and not possess it. Hallelujah. 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 You say, I, I, I can't kick the devil out. I'm not strong enough. Well, then take your car to transport. Take your title deed down to the officers. Uh, and they're going to get the police force out. Uh, and if they won't, uh, if they resist the police, they'll get the Navy. And if the Navy can't do it, they'll get the Army. Hallelujah. And then they'll get their Air Force. Uh, I've got God's Army, Police Force, Navy, the Holy Spirit uh, on my side. I claim a miracle now. I claim revival now. I claim revelation now. I claim what's ours now. I claim miracles now. I claim supernatural manifestations of the living God now. Hallelujah. <laughs> 